Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus today. Thank God for another opportunity. Praise God. The Lord has given me to come and share with you the precious words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Truly, he's worthy to be praised. And praise God. I thank God on this Sunday afternoon. Praise God. Uh, I feel the leading of the Lord to just share with some things that things with you that the Lord has been putting on my heart. And I am Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. He is the answer to all of our problems. Doesn't matter how large, how small they may be. Praise God. We can, praise God, trust in the Lord. If we'll cast all our cares on him and realize that the Lord, he cares for us. Praise God. There's no problems worldwide, local, in the family. There's no problems that the Lord cannot solve. There is, again, nothing too hard for the Lord. But I do have a word from the Lord just for you today. Praise God, and I'm happy about that. Praise God, we had a nice, great time in fellowship today. And praise God, I didn't preach today, but my brother Milton Dudley preached today. And oh boy, he done a great job. God bless him. But I just had a leading. I felt that, uh, praise God, leading to just share some things with you out of the book of Hebrews, book of Hebrews. And I do encourage you, praise God, to look with me today in the book of Hebrews as we, um, praise God, as we look at God's word, praise God. And uh, I, I would be so happy if you would just take your Bible and uh, like say, don't take my word for it. You look yourself, see what does said the Lord. And I believe God got a special, special word just for you today. Amen. If you tune in to this broadcast, we'll look at the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, a familiar passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews, first and second verse. Just those two verses there in the book of Hebrews. And Paul says these words, Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He says, let us lay aside every weight, every weight, and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, and he says, We are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. Father, we bless you today. Lord, thank you for this, another opportunity come and to share your word with your people. I pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit might move in a mighty way today upon this preacher, upon your people, anoint the both of us, my my mouth and their ears, that we might both uh, hear what thus saith the Lord, O oh God, and we'll be mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory. It is in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Praise God. We just thank God for Jesus. And now, uh, we want to take a, a, a thought from those words that we find in that, uh, praise God, that second verse there. The second verse, Paul says that we are to look unto Jesus. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. We're looking on Christ, the author uh, and finisher of our faith. That's, that's the word we're going to try to dwell upon. Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, in that 11th chapter, most of familiar with the 11th chapter of Hebrews, that famous, praise God, that famous chapter there, we, we sometimes refer to it as being the Faith Hall of Fame because in, in it is recorded a, a list of our great accomplishments the saints of old performed while they were here on earth. And, and also how, how, how many of them, they were martyred, praise God, they were martyred for their steadfast and their unmovable faith that uh, they demonstrated in the Lord at this particular time. And uh, also now in that 11th chapter of Hebrews, we got another message there. And that message is about the faithfulness of our God toward them that put their trust in him. God is faithful. Praise God. And since God never changes, he's the same yesterday, 
today and forever. God don't ever change. So if, if, if they were faithful during that time and we are faithful today, then God will bless us like he blessed them. We can be assured of that. Praise God. He will be faithful toward us today, just like he were them. If we only put our trust in him, trust and obey. That's that old song that you used to sing. For there's no other way, praise God, to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But now we're looking at the 12th chapter. In this 12th chapter of Hebrews, uh, the believers are compared uh, to runners, runners in a race. Amen. That's what Paul said. And we know, praise God, that if a runner uh, expects to win a race, then uh, he, praise God, or she, uh, whoever it is, first of all, you got to remove, uh, in the natural sense, you got to remove your heavy clothing. Get as light as you possibly can. Praise God. That's the first step. You got to, uh, you got to, uh, uh, just strip down more or less. And, uh, this, it will ensure that you're able to, you know, be as swift as you possibly can be. But all those clothing or too much baggage will slow you down. Praise God. So now here in, in Hebrews here 12, the apostle Paul, he's encouraging the believers to, to lay aside everything that would hinder us from winning this heavenly race that we're involved in right now. We're running for the, uh, the prize, uh, not down here, but in that heavenly race. Amen. And just like the saints of old, of yesterday, in that 11th chapter, praise God, just as they did many, many years ago, then we need to uh, take lessons from them, praise God, and observe uh, how they laid aside. You know, People in that last chapter deal with people like Noah. How many of y'all, we remember Noah now. Noah in his race uh, for that heavenly crown that we are engaged in right now. See, the, the weights, the weights that he had to cast aside in order to run, run his race were similar to those that, especially that we face today. Praise God. What, what were the weights that he faced it? Well, mockery, hmm, taunting. Uh, we ridiculing, uh, that's what we face today. You know, people think we have fell off the, uh, a turnip truck or something, you know, and, uh, therefore we have to, uh, uh, face all these different attitudes today as children of God and praise God as, uh, as, as Noah prophesied of God's coming judgment on the earth. That's what, that was his message. Praise God, it's going to rain, brother. The judgment of God is coming upon this earth. And no, they thought the old guy was crazy. They, they called him a crazy old kook, a crazy old man. But no, it didn't stop his work, though. Praise God, he just kept on running. Hallelujah. He kept on focusing his attention upon the task that God had given him. Him, praise God, just like the Apostle Paul. Oh, praise God. I can see the mirror image of the Apostle Paul. Praise God. He did the same thing. If you look at that book of Acts 26, look at Acts 26 in your Bible there. And if you can't keep up with me, just call, praise God, just write it down. Acts 26 there. Let's see what Paul did. Look at verse 25 there. 26, and we're looking at 25. 25, and uh, I mean 22. We're going to look at 26 and 22. Let's start there. Having therefore obtained, praise God, Paul, help from God. We're talking about Paul now. Paul said, I continue this day, witnessing both to the small and the great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, hmm, and that he should be first, uh, uh, be the first that should uh, rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Praise God. He told Paul, much learning done made you mad. And that's what the world thinks of us. Amen. When we come forth here with the word of God, and I know a lot of people think I just fell off of, uh, the deep end of the cliff or something, you know, but they think we're mad. They thought uh, Noah was mad, but now he, all the taunting and the mockery and, uh, and the ridiculing, he had to lay all of that aside. Don't, he didn't let that stop him from running the race. And by the same token, we can't let it stop us today. Praise God. When people think that we're crazy, they, they thought he was crazy. Amen. But now thank God for Jesus Christ. He was mad. Ain't no doubt about that. I don't have no, pro I, I, I know he was mad. 
Praise God, but he was madly in love with Jesus Christ. Praise God, as the true saints of God are. Every one of us, we are mad. Oh, God, yes, we're mad. But now, in my effort to share Christ with others, you know, as I witness to people, some have seriously asked me these crazy, crazy questions. They ask, they ask so many questions all the time, you know. How can you believe a story like that? When I tell about Jesus Christ, uh, praise God, dying for our sins, coming from heaven, taking a body, praise God, to die and take my whipping. They say, how can you believe a story like that? Praise God. And I look at them real seriously, like, you know, and I say, well, I can believe by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has opened my understanding. I could not have, have understood it un, 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 unless God had opened my heart and mind. And that's what God did. But now as believers, we must not allow the enemy to discourage us. That's the word here. See, that's the, Noah had to strip down and not be moved by discouragement, not be moved by the taunting and all those things that he had to, to deal with. Praise God. But now, here's a good thing. Just remember this now. Remember this. Remember this. Although they laughed at Noah like they're going to laugh at us. Amen. The last laugh was on them. Am I right about that? When that sky broke loose and that rain came, they weren't laughing no more. And you're not going to be laughing when it's over with here. Praise God, because we're coming, uh, we're on a mission here. Praise God. And it's, in the end, we're going to have the same, same results. Your laughing going to turn to crying. Praise God, just like it did. But now he had to lay aside every weight. That's what Paul said, to run this race. We got to do like they did. What about Abraham? Pray God in his beard for that heavenly crown. What did Abraham do? What was the weight that uh, he had to lay aside? Well, I'll tell you exactly what his one was. And it's a problem that we have today. He had to lay aside family. He had to break ties. Huh? He had to leave his natural blood family. God told him to. And join the family of God. He had to leave a stable environment to go to a place with a question mark. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know the direction. God said go and he had to go. And so now he had to, he had to push away from family, the comforts of family, the familiar for the unfamiliar. Praise God for uh, the unholy. He had to leave the unholy to go to the holy. And the problem was he didn't know where all this was at. But he trusted God. Amen. And to the new believers today, especially new believers, you know, I'm seasoned in the Lord. And therefore, I understand family. I understand family don't understand me. I understand that. So I have no problem with that whatsoever. But new believers have a problem breaking away. They want to run, but they got family hanging on them. They got family and what family think and um, what mama think and what daddy think. See, we got to get rid of all that. Amen. Praise God. But this is indeed a, a monumental task for many people today. A minute today struggling, trying to free themselves from family. But God told Abraham, leave. That was that weight that was going to weigh him down. It's weighing a lot of you down right now. You ain't made a decision to follow God. You're still following mother, sister, and brother and all the rest of them. But you got to do it. Praise God. Abraham had to do it, and you got to do it. See, Matthew 10, 37, Jesus said, He that loveth father or mother more than me, he said, is not worthy. You're not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's what Jesus said. Praise God. In that Luke 14, in Luke 14, praise God, uh, 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 1433, Jesus said these words. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaken not all that he had, he cannot. Jesus said, he cannot, he cannot be my disciple. Now, in the end, Abraham became known abroad, locally, as the father of faith. Amen. And honors and riches was heaped upon him. So now, because he did not allow the weight of family to weigh him down, even Lot, his, 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 his nephew there, praise God, separate, get, go, 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 go. And then there was Moses now. Huh? I'm, we're talking about Paul said, in order to run this heavenly race, we got to lay aside every weight. Lay aside. We got to lay aside the weights that's in your life, you know. And Moses, he, in his bid for that heavenly crown, praise God, the weight that he had to cast aside was fame and fortune. Oh, boy. Now we're in deep water, aren't we? Lay aside fame and fortune. Hebrews 11 and 26. It says that he esteemed, we know that, we know that by memory, don't we? He esteemed the reproaches of Christ as greater riches than all the treasures, all the treasures of Egypt. 
Praise God. And then if you look at Matthew 6, 24, Christ said these words, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and he will what? Despise the other. Then he caps it off. You cannot serve God and mammon. So Moses, in his bid to run this heavenly race, he had to get away from wanting to be Mr. Big Stuff, bougie, bougie, you know, like a lot of your church folks are. You want to be bougie. You think you all that and all, and, you know, and whatever. But uh, uh, see, the love of money, the pursuit of fame, praise God, has caused many to drop out of this race. Mm, and we must follow the lead of our good shepherd. Praise God. The Bible said he made of himself no reputation. Praise God, took upon himself the form of a servant. See, we're not by reputation. I want the Lord to be glorified in my life. I don't care if you don't, <laughs> you don't heap no praise on me. Praise God, because I'm not worthy. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but he is. Give it to him. If you got any for me, give it to him, because I'm here by the glory of God. It's through him that I am here right now. But there are many saints, though, many saints of God, uh, uh, Hall of Famers that we could mention, because 11th chapter is full of them, you know, who paid the ultimate price, ultimate price to run this heavenly race. Amen. They're in heaven right now. Praise God. Even as I speak, they're in heaven enjoying themselves. But now we want to press on a little deeper. He, he says he got some more instructions on how to run this race. So we're going to go deeper into uh, uh, these great uh, uh, verses of scripture here in one and two. This one and two. Look at Hebrews 12, one again. Paul now. Paul would uh, have us focus uh, upon the sin which does so easily beset us. The sin which does so easily beset us. Mm. That particular sin that you just can't get rid of, or you just don't want to get rid of. Mm. I call it the rich young ruler's syndrome. <laughs> That's what I call it. Let's look at that rich, uh, just a little bit of him. We know about the rich young ruler. He, he, he had all kind of accolades for himself. He had done so many good things and kept all the commandments and all that good stuff. And uh, praise God. Look at uh, Matthew 19 and 20. We'll just look at that. Matthew 19, and we're looking at 20 down. And, and it, take it up there. He said, and the young man said unto Jesus, all these things have I kept from my youth up, Lord. Now, what he said, what I lack I yet, Lord, what is it that I hadn't done? You, 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 can you find any fault with me, Lord? Look what Jesus said in 21. <laughs> Jesus said unto him, if thou will be perfect, brother, hmm, go sell all that thou hast and give to the poor. And then you shall have treasures in heaven. And then just come on now and follow me. What Jesus told him, very simple, since you all this in a, in a bag of chips, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now his ace in the hole, this young ruler had an ace in the hole that he wouldn't, uh, he was holding on to. And that was that bank account there. You know, the boy was kind of well all his riches and comforts there. And Christ wanted to be his ace in the hole. Christ wants to be your ace in the hole. See, now, early in my ministry, I learned one thing. I want, I learned this very good. I realized that uh, the thing that you're holding on to, hmm, that thing, that thing that you're holding on to, that thing that you love and you cherish so much, that thing, that's what the Lord has his hands outstretched for. Hmm? That what you're holding on to, that's what the Lord, he wants that. Amen. The Lord will not always, he will, he will, he will, he will never, he won't allow you. Praise God to find peace and joy and happiness and security and satisfaction in none of these things. It's got to be him. He's got to be our all in all. You got to find your joy. You got to find your peace. You got to find your satisfaction in Christ. Praise God. He's a jealous God. He said, my name is jealous. Uh, thou shalt have no other God before me. Mm, the very thing the young, young rich and ruler wanted to hold on to. Christ said, give it to me. Give it to me and take me, trust me to be all that for you. Oh boy, he went away sad, the Bible said. Amen. Mm. In his word, he plainly tells us that, uh, praise God, we should cast all our cares upon him because what? He cares for us. Do you trust that word? Do you trust? That? I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Do you trust that word? Do you trust that word? Praise God. Now, remember, that's the faith. We're talking about faith. It is the faith chapter here that we're looking at. Amen. Thou shalt have no other God before me. You can't trust nothing 
ahead of the Lord. That's what Jesus said. But now Paul talked about, we need to examine ourselves. That sin that so easily beset you, huh? it may be unbelief. It may be less lack of faith. And if that be your case, if that's your case today, you need to do exactly what the disciples did when they conf were confronted with the same problem. Praise God. In Luke 17, 5, I think I make him quote that, 17, 5, the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. You need to ask God. You have not because you ask not. Hmm? Asking it shall be given to you. Lord, increase our faith. If that's what's holding you back, your lack of faith, praise God. And, and just be honest with the Lord. A lot of people are terrified today. They tell they won't go to church. They're terrified. They're afraid. Well, tell the Lord you're afraid then. Praise God and say, Lord, do please increase my faith, Lord. Hmm? Or perhaps the sin that does so easily beset you, uh, that's keeping you from, 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 from entering or even running this heavenly race. Maybe it's your past sins. See, a lot of times people, uh, the devil, the enemy will have you focus on how awful you have been. And how unworthy you are to be called a child of God. Your past sins. And sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll just, he'll rack your nerves day and night. Showing you how you used to do this. You used to do that. You know, they tell me that some of the guys come, well, man, I used to know, you used to do that. Yeah, I used to do a lot of things, brother. Ain't no doubt about that. But now that I've been saved and washed in the blood of the lamb, I, praise God, I do one thing now. I do one thing. I praise God. I do one thing. I am, I have one track mind here. I'm just a narrow minded, uh, Jesus bigot, I guess. Yeah, whatever they call me, you know, but uh, it don't stop me from running this race. I'm going to run anyhow. Amen. But sometimes our past sins will haunt us. And praise God, if that's your case right now, if you look at me right now and you've been this and you've done that, I got good news for you. Praise God. If you're a true bona fide, a bona fide believer in Jesus Christ, I'm talking about love the Lord 24 7, all your sins. And I shared that with the church today. All your sins, past, present, future, all your sins are forgiven. Every last one of them, the one you had none yet. If you truly washed in the blood, a true bona fide believer, all of your sins. The Lord says in the word, praise God, concerning my sins, He said, I will remember them no more. That's what God says. And there's therefore now no condemnation. I said, no, 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 no. No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And again, I do say now that uh, with this knowledge, it's not a license to live in sin, brother. Huh? This knowledge makes me want to uh, love the Lord and lavish my obedience upon God. The fact that he loves me so much that he forgives me for my past sins, my present sins, and my future sins. Praise God. See, now, so now we need to lay aside this guilt. If you got a guilt trip about your past life, forget it. Yeah, cast it up on the Lord. Amen. The worry, the frustrations about whether or not the Lord is going to accept you. If you accept Christ, he washes all your sins away. He cast all, see, all we got to do is he cast them into the sea of forgiveness and all you got to do is cast all your cares on him. That's what the Bible said. Why, why, why that, uh, pastor? Because the Bible said he cares for you. Praise God. In Hebrews 11, going back down to 12 again, Hebrews 12 again, in verse number two there, 12 and two again. Let's, let's look at that again. Praise God. He, Paul said, we're to look unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. See, our attention must be focused. It must be focused <laughs> not on ourselves, not on what you can do, not on our works, not on my abilities, not on my efforts, but on Christ. I'm running. He, praise God, really, I'm not even running. He's running for me. He's carrying me. He got me in his arms. He's carrying me across the finish line. Second Corinthians 1 9. Praise God. Second Corinthians 1 9. Praise God, Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, he says here that we have we have the sinners of death in ourselves. You're a dead man. You can't, you can't do it no how. Praise God. That's why we have to be, we have to take the life of Christ makes us new creatures and we're born again of the Spirit of God. So the life that we now live is Christ's life in us. You, you're dead. You're, that old life is gone. You're dead, man. Can't win no how. Praise God. But now he said we have the sinners of death in ourselves that we should not what? Trust in ourselves. But in God who raised the dead, praise God, who raised, the power is in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we look to him as we run this race. And as we believers, praise God, as we run this race, we, we, we must look away, look away from everything 
and everyone in this world and focus our attention on Christ alone. In other words, not, not let these people and situations cause you uh, to lose step. Not one step. Don't lose one step. Look at Colossians 3 now. Look at Colossians 3. Praise God. Ain't God good today? Ah, boy, praise God. I hope the saints of God enjoying this here. I know the naysayers are saying, boy, that guy there got a bad problem. Amen. Thank you for that. Uh, for uh, Colossians 3, 1. Let's look at that 3, 1. It says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Praise God. For you are dead. Oh, Yo, you're dead. You're dead. That old man. Your life is hid with Christ. Your life is hid with Christ and it's in God. That's what Paul said. In God. See, the things of this life, they're temporary. They're temporary. All, all of you. Everything, all these things that we so attached to, they're all temporary. And, 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 and if we focus upon them, they will slow us down in this heavenly race. They're going to slow you down. No, if I had about it. See, we got to focus on eternal things. Hmm? Not the temporal, temporal things, but eternal things, like righteousness, praise God, holiness, and sanctification, and justification. Uh, let your mind, praise God, dwell on these pure things, amen. And again, now, and again, and again, as we run this heavenly race, as we run this heavenly race, we must look to Jesus, he says, huh? the one who put us in the race. Huh? I didn't volunteer for this race. Huh? I mean, I thank God for it. I'm glad I'm in it. But now I, I must admit, I didn't volunteer. Praise God. Actually, I was drafted. Mm, but I'm glad I was drafted now. I'm so glad he drafted me. Praise God. He put me in the race. He's the author of our faith. Huh? The faith that we have. He's the author. The faith that now allows us to fellowship with our creator God. I fellowship with the Lord each and every day. In the spirit. I say in the spirit. And I know some of you don't understand that because you had not been spiritually born again. But in the spirit. Huh? But the whole, I think and Andre Crouch says you don't know until it happened to you. If it ain't happened to you, you don't have an idea what I'm talking about. Amen. But now the faith that only God gives, God gives us his faith. He's the author. He put us in the race. And only God, he gives us his faith. And only God can sustain his faith. He keeps us. He keeps me. He keeps this faith. He grows this faith in me. He, he, I mean, if he started it, you think he's going to turn it over to me to grow it, to sustain it? Oh, no, it's his faith. The just shall live by his faith, the Bible says. Amen. And Ephesians 2, if you look at Ephesians 2, and uh, praise God, just uh, back up a little bit to Ephesians 2 there. And let's look at, uh, praise God, let's look at 8 and 9. 2, 8 and 9. 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. You ain't got enough sense to do this here. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You ain't got nothing to boast about. I don't have anything to boast about. Why? Because I didn't put myself in the race. The Lord put me in this race. I was drafted. Thank God the Lord drafted me, Lord. I didn't, I, I would kick it and scream because I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to run this race. Oh, God, but he drafted me. But now I thank God for what he's done in my life today. We must never forget that the Lord Jesus is the first one, too. He's the first one to run this race. Praise God. My Bible called him a forerunner. He's the forerunner. Go to Hebrews 6 now. Praise God. We, we, Hebrews 6, huh? Praise God. I hope, you, I hope you're getting something out of this here. Hebrews 6. Let's look at that. Praise God. I'm going to find it here in a minute here. Hebrews 6, and we're going to look at, uh, look at uh, 6 and 20 there. Hebrews 6, and we're going to look at verse number 20. Talking about Christ. Now, he's the forerunner. He, he ran the race himself. He ran before me and you. He said, whether the forerunner is for us, entered even Jesus, made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Praise God. Jesus started the race off. He ran the race. In Colossians 1.18, if you look at 1.18, flip back there right quick. Colossians 1, 18, what, what it says? It says here for in, in 1, 18, for he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the what? The preeminence. 
He has the preeminence. See, therefore, now what, what are we saying there? We are ever forever to look to Jesus. Look to him now. The faithful one who has run this race, he can cross the finish line. Oh, praise God. And he's beckoning me to run, James. Run, 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 James. Run, praise God. Run for the prize. Now, I ain't running for my life. I'm already saved. I got the life. I got eternal life already in me right now. What am I running for? I'm running for the prize, the high calling, the prize. Oh, praise God for Jesus. But now we, we must take notes here. Take notes uh, uh, of how the Lord finished this race. Praise God. How did he finish this race here? Oh, praise God. Ain't the Lord good? Praise God. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying this. How did he run this race? Hebrews 12 and 2. I'll teach in text here. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and he suffered the shame. How did he run this race? With joy. Oh, it was a joyful thing. Oh, he was pain endured? Was pain involved, I mean? He endured the cross, yes. He suffered the shame, yes. All this was set before him, but he had joy. Why did you have, how do you have joy when you've been abused, misused? And hung up on a cross. Isaiah 53 and 11. Isaiah 53 and 11 says, He shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. That's what Isaiah says. Praise God. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their sins. Okay, so now he, 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 he bore our sins. He justified many. He justified me. I've been justified, just as if I never sinned. That's what that, that's what justified means here, in, in a sense that he is now. That he looked at me just as if I've never sinned. I've been justified. He bore my sins, praise God, through the travailing in his soul. But it was with joy. He did this with joy. It was for joy that the Lord, praise God, he received in the process of all that suffering, all that hate that he had to endure, he enjoyed because he was redeeming my soul. He rejoiced because he was doing it for me. He was suffering this pain for me, the humiliation for me, the shame at the cross for me. Praise God, little old me. I know, I know some saints over there from saying me too. Well, let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. You say, I'm testifying for me right now. But if you want to jump in here, you better get in here. Praise God. Look at John 16 there. 16 and 21. John 16, 21. Because uh, the, there's an analogy here in John 16, 21 that uh, seems to uh, give us a clear picture of Christ's suffering and uh, the joy that came forth out of his suffering. Look at John 16 and 21 there. John 16 and 21. He says here in this analogy, a woman, when she is in travail, she uh, has sorrow. She's uh, in birth pains are coming now because her hour has come, right? But as soon as she delivered of that child, oh boy, she remembered no more the anguish. What the Bible said? The pain. No more. Why is that so? For joy. For what? For joy that a man is born in the world. Oh, praise God. She was crying and screaming a while ago. Hmm? Oh, Jesus had to go through some things on the cross. But when he got through and sealed the deal, my salvation, James' salvation, praise God, he ran that heavenly race. Oh, you know, I could camp out on this scripture right here. Praise God. This is one of my favorite scripture here. As Christ ran this heavenly race, being abused and misused, he had me on his mind. Little old James, I'm fixing it up for him. He saw me being born again. He saw, praise God, born again of the spirit of the Lord. He saw millions and millions of his saints coming forth. And that joy started swelling up. He saw us being born again of the spirit of God, producing out of his wounds, out of his shed blood, came a new race. A new race. I'm one of them. Fanatics of the Lord. Praise God, running this race. He saw us standing firm on his word in this ungodly world today. Oh, yes. I know a lot of you think we're coots. Huh? But I'm going to stand there because that's for joy. That brings joy to his heart as he's at the right hand of the Father right now. And he's watching me run this race. Huh? He hear you right now. 
said something wrong with that guy. Something happened to him. Oh, yes. Well, you're right. Something happened to me. Praise God. There's no doubt about that. But now Christ saw me preaching this word. He saw me teaching and witnessing uh, and rejoicing and praising his name. And oh, what joy. What joy filled his soul each and every day when he sees the saints of God. All that pain, all that whipping, all that spinning upon him, all of the taunts that he had to endure. Now he's happy because I'm happy because he has come called us to lift up the holy name of Jesus. And praise God, that's what we're doing today. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. He saw the millions and millions of saints born again, sanctified, satisfied. Oh, praise God. Yes, he did. Justified. Millions of saints gathered around the throne of God one day, casting all their crowns at his feet, crying, holy, holy, holy. He saw all that on the cross. That's what he's looking at. And that's what it was for the joy. That was set before him, hallelujah, that he endured the cross. Glory to the Lamb of God today. He only is worthy to be praised. And you preachers that are trying to steal glory from the Lord. I know you said you're doing it to give God praise, but God knows your heart. I want you to know that. You are nothing but a thief. That's what you are. You're trying to steal of God for God's glory, God's thunder. You want to project yourself. You better be careful. I'm going to tell you something. You better be careful. You all glory belong to the Lord. And again, it was for joy, joy of knowing that once again, his father's law would be glorified. The word of God would be once again dignified and glorified that enabled him to endure this cross. Amen. John 12. Let's look at John 12. I'm going to be just about through here. We're going to get through here. Praise God. I, I, I don't know. Uh, John 12. I, I'm not going to apologize. John 12. Here. <laughs> 12 and 27. <laughs> look at John 12, 25. Jesus said here, now is my soul trouble now. Praise God, as he uh, enduring this cross here. What shall I say? Father, save me from that hour. Is this what I'm supposed to say? He said, but for this cause came I to this hour. That's why I'm here. huh? He said, Father, glorify your name. Hmm? Then came there a voice from heaven. Christ here speaking on earth, and a voice come down from heaven. The Father said here, I have both glorified it. And I'm going to glorify it again. And he's glorifying it every day. Every time a saint of God will get up and say hallelujah. And when the world look at you like you're crazy, you think I'm going to stop running because you're looking at me? You think I'm going to stop running this race because you think I'm going off the deep end? Oh, praise God. And it was through his death on the cross that once again, his father's name was glorified. And this brought great joy. It brought great joy to the soul of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That same name. That same name lifted up, but that's the same name that so little, people think so little of today. That name that they use to curse people out with. You, I, you ever heard them use that name to curse people? To express their disappointment and their hurt? Have you heard them use that name that Jesus died for? Jesus died for that name to bring your glory to that name again. And that brought joy to his heart. Praise God. And again. It was through the death, his death on the cross, and the prospect of once again being able to enjoy the presence of his father. He looked forward to going back to the presence of his father, which he missed so very much. He did miss it. That brought great joy to his soul. He was going home, and he was happy. Amen. Complete his mission. Praise God. John 17, 5. Praise God. Jesus said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me. With glorify thy me, Christ said, with thine own self, with the glory that what which I had before thee, before with thee, before the world was made. That's what Christ said. Once again, praise God. Look at John 8 and 29 there. Praise God. Jesus said, He that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that are what pleases to him. Psalm uh, 16 and 8. Look at Psalm 16 and 8 there. Praise God. Uh, the Lord speaking there. Uh, I have set the Lord always before me. Praise God. Before he is in my right hand and I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. My heart is glad. My glory rejoiceth. And my flesh shall also rest in hope, for thou will not leave my soul in hell. That's what Jesus said to the Father. You ain't going to leave my soul in hell, neither whether you suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Psalms 22 and 8. Praise God. Another uh, great scripture there. He trusted on him. He trusted on the Lord. That's what he said. He trusted on the Lord there. Praise God. Then what if he trusted in the Lord? He said, let him what? Let him what? Deliver him. Praise God. Let him deliver him, saying that he delighted in him. That's the soldiers turning him down on the ground. But they didn't know one thing. He delighted in his father. And he was looking forward to going back there. But he ran the race for us. He ran it for us. Now, I'm running. I'm running. And again, I ain't running for my life. 
I'm running for the prize, praise God. But Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And this faith that is in our hearts, the believers that is, originated with God. He started it, he gonna finish it. If God started it, he gonna finish it. And he started mine, like I said, I didn't volunteer. He started, he supplied what I need. When I went into the Air Force many years ago, praise God, I didn't have to buy no uniform. I didn't have to buy no food. I didn't have to buy anything. They supplied what I needed. Lord recruited me. He supplies my every need. Praise God. And praise God. He will perfect me. He, 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 he called me. He started this race. And he's going to perfect this race. He's going to perfect me. I'm God's miracles child. I'm a miracle child. Y'all know, know that. But now he is not through with me yet. Not with you. Now, last of all, praise God. We're going to get ready to close it out. I know some of you saints, you're, you're enjoying it. I know. But some of say, I wish you'd get through with this here. Praise God. But I'll never be through this. <laughs> last but not least, Paul tells us that we must run this race with patience. Run with patience. Oh, hallelujah. Knowing that he who begun the good work in us, hallelujah, he's going to finish this work from the beginning. Time was set. My time was set to start in this heavenly race. I tried to start. God started the clock ticking when he called me, when he saved me. Praise God. And I got a finishing time. I'm not leaving until he get through with me. I understand. And I'm not leaving until God get through with me. Amen. I'm going to run with patience. The race set before me, notwithstanding it, all the trials, all the tribulation, the temptation, the taunting, the uh, all the problems people uh, bring to us, we have to face. I'm going to run this race. I'm going to run this race with patience. Amen. Romans 5, 3, and 4 says, and not only so, but we what? We glory in tribulations. <laughs> Knowing that tribulation work what? Patience. There it is. And patience experience. Experience hope because what? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by way of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. Amen. And last but not least, the Bible said we got a great crowd of, cloud of witnesses. We got witnesses watching us run. Do you not know the saints of God, the angels of God are watching us run this race? Do you not know that? They cheering us on down here, uh, down here. Run, James. Run, James. Well, oh, don't let, don't let them, that, that mean look. Don't let them criticism stop you. Run, James. Run, James. That's what they said. So let us praise God, like the Apostle Paul, press toward the mark, press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God. Let us pray so today. You saints of God, be encouraged today. Amen. And one day we'll be able to say with the Apostle Paul, I fought a good fight. I'll finish my course. I have kept the faith. One day we'll be able to say that. If you're not saved today. Now, I, I've been mostly encouraged the saints today, but if you're not saved today, Praise God. God is calling for you today. The Lord is reaching out for you today. He wants you to come. Be a part of the family of God. And it begins with realizing that Jesus died for your sin. Will you ask the Lord to forgive you today? All of sin comes short of the glory of God. That includes you. But you need forgiveness. And you need it on this side, not on the other side. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Ask God to forgive you today. Ask Jesus to save you today. Because he said, I stand at the door and I knock. I'm knocking on your heart. I want to come in. Let him in, please. Let him in. Praise God. God bless you. But if you enjoyed this video today, praise God, go over and hit that like button. And then when we, praise God, come and hit that subscribe button, go back and subscribe there and you'll get a notification when we come again. But until that time, praise God, may God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer today.